Hello IPX as we are again at Embedded World and we're going to be talking about that alien technology. Yes, we know we always talk about alien technology when we're talking about AI. So we're on this booth here with Manuel from SEMA AI. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, who's going to tell us all about his AI solution. And as we know, we've talked about this quite a lot on the, on the, on the channel and we quite often wonder whether AI actually exists or it's just really, really clever spreadsheets. So he tells me it's really, really clever AI. So, Manuel, tell us all about SEMA and tell us about these demonstrations you got going on here. Sure. So, what SEMA is doing is a processor yep. uh, or a chip. Actually, it has three processors within the chip. So, right. it has an A65 ARM processor, yep. an EB74 Synopsys uh, DSP. Right. And we have our own uh, processor, which right. is a. So, you've taken learning. two existing pieces of technology. Yes. And then you've added your own flavor. Yeah, exactly. Right, and is that the differentiator when we're looking at the hardware? Exactly. So, Perfect. So tell us a little bit about just that third part then. Yeah, so 50 tops, 5 watts, uh, running quantized in intake. It, it also supports other type of ints, like int 16 and int 32, in case you need to boost up your uh, quantization accuracy. Yeah. And it's essentially really fast and really efficient at the same time. Right. So a lot going on in AI. Yeah. You go around Embedded World, everybody's talking about AI. Everybody says they have the fastest, they have the best. Everybody's better than everybody else. Yeah. So if, if, if for our community, introducing this concept of adding what you're doing, yeah. how is it, what, what is your differentiator? So we are the fastest per what? Fastest per what? Yeah, and we have actually proven it because we have beaten NVIDIA twice in ML Commons MLPerf. So... You've beaten NVIDIA twice? Yes, in a row. Right, and you're perfectly comfortable to say we've beaten NVIDIA twice? Oh yeah, yeah you, you're brilliant. It, it, it's all right. So when you talk about per watt, is that, is, is that because obviously AI just absolutely eats up energy exactly eats up energy so that's why energy per watt is so important yes exactly so right. this is something that you want to run on the edge right absolutely so one of the things that you want to be funless you don't want to be doing maintenance every three weeks yeah and you don't want so heat's a big issue heat is another big issue because yep. you have a small enclosure yeah so this is where we are ideal for those type of use cases very good when you are on the edge right so what would be the so, so just talk us through some of these demos here that just talk us through so so, so your chip is sitting somewhere out on the edge so it, it's here instead of here right okay no i mean as in yeah i it, didn't it, mean I know it's there. Okay. I know, Manuel, I know I'm stupid, but I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I know it's there. But okay. I know sure. that. So it's sat out on the edge somewhere. Yes. Right? Taking in data. Yeah. So first of all, you're using up very little or small amounts of power, even better than NVIDIA. Yes. Right? And it's not having to be driven, it's not having to be cooled every five seconds because of the low amount of power. Yeah, exactly. Right. So are that, would you describe those as being your two most powerful thing why an embedded engineer should come and talk to you yes and another thing is we do effortless ml so we try to make as simple as possible for all these developers that they don't know about ml Absolutely. and they want to you know implement ml in their system yeah yeah that's or let's say second focus on right. the software side so how does that work tell us how that i mean you know we, we've done a lot of reviews of AI on IP Exchange. We've yep. talked a lot about how, at the end of the day, it's just really efficient processing, and this whole machine learning thing, very new, still very new. So you may, so, so you have software that makes it very intuitive. How does that work? So if I'm a design engineer, and I come and talk to you, how does that work? So you can take any type of network in any framework, put it through our tools. We use an open source uh, interpreter called TBM, that will give us an internal representation, and then that internal... So that, that's open to everybody, that open source is open Yeah, we, we have our own flavor of TBM, right? Uh, to make it more efficient, to change some layers, to adapt better to our binary, but then once that goes through TBM, 
then we create that binary and that binary runs on our chips. Right, right, okay. So you make it very, so you've got this hardware, you've got those two, two existing pieces of technology, then you add your own flavor to it, which brings us very low power per watt, exactly. your, your, your description, yeah. which is very, very low power, uh, and it doesn't create as much heat because it's using less power. Yeah. Excellent. So just, just talk us through these demonstrations here as to exactly what's going on. Sure. So this is YOLO V8 uh, running at 100 FPS. So that's what this machine's doing here? Yes. Yep. Four streams. So each stream is running at 25 FPS. Uh, it, everything from pre-processing to overlay, even the draws on the cars, like actually drawing the squares yep. uh, and the text, everything is happening on the happening on the board. The only All thing, out on the edge. Yeah, everything. The only thing that it's not happening on the host is putting the uh, image on the screen, like the video. Yeah. That, that's it. Uh, everything else is happening on the board. Like you get the video stream, you put it into the board, and then in the board we do all the pre-processing for that model. So that's like normalization, cropping, etc. And then we also do the model itself and then all the post-processing. Uh, so actually interpret that data right. and do this overlay where it's telling you where the cars are. So with your machine learning software that you talked about, yeah. so what's the, can you just ask it to learn from what it's seeing and then give you the data or do you have to pre-program it? So it's just inference, no training, so right. it, it cannot learn, right? Right. Uh, it uses... Important, important. Yeah, uh, so just inference, but yeah, so... Uh, I guess your question doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what question might that be, Manuel? Uh, that it learns from Yes, the that's the question, yes. I'm interested to find out, is it learning or is it just is, is it just really quick processing? It's really quick processing. Right, yes. right. Which is really important to, to, to differentiate. Yeah. Let's just talk about bandwidth. Yeah. So how does, how you know, when, when we talk to AI companies, they're constantly talking about their level of bandwidth. So how, do your, how does your bandwidth compare to other AI companies? So first I want to make one point. You please do. Bandwidth is not as important here. One of the reasons why bandwidth is important in general for other companies is because you need to feed thousands of images per second into the chip, right? Yeah. And then you have to get the output of that model and do something on uh, your CPU processor, talk to camera, or you know, <laughs> through the North Bridge somewhere, right? Yeah. Like you, yep. you, you want to do that processing. The thing is, we are doing all that processing on the chip. Right. So the only thing that you want at the end is, like for example, if we are doing here, this is another demo. This one has a post dynamic post processing, so you can change post processing life. Uh, like for example. If we go here, this wire will count the cars that are passing through yep. that lane, but it also will tell you who is tailgating and it will save it on a database. Yep. So the only thing that you actually want here is, okay, what is this number? 7,320 something. And if someone is tailgating, so the bandwidth is almost zero, the, the one that, that you need, right? Yeah. Because you are already so, interpreting the data. So sorry for this stupid question. Yeah, don't worry. Is that a different approach? Is that a different approach to AI that you're doing that's different from everybody else? Or is that just a simple conclusion that you've come to? No, yes, it is. Because uh, most people, they just want to accelerate the AI, yeah. AI part. So right? you do have a different approach? Yes. We do. Fantastic. So just, just very quickly, yep. just explain, because obviously when we talk to AI companies, yep. it's constantly about bandwidth, constantly about how quickly we, we can formulate the data. But what you're saying is that at SEMA AI, you have a different approach to how you go about analyzing the data. Yes, so... Okay, so just, just in 45 seconds, try and explain what that difference is. Yeah, so most AI companies want to really accelerate the machine learning part, yeah, and then the pre and post processing, someone else will take care of it. Yeah, like Intel CPU, yeah, uh, Ron Epic, something, something else. We do everything on the same chip, so the bandwidth obviously within the chip it's humongous because you are 
in the same silicon. Humongous. We haven't had that word used on IP Exchange <laughs> for a very long while. Just remember that word. Human we should have a t-shirt with humongous it, written on it, shouldn't it, we? It, Great quote. Sure. Uh, so it's a real time yeah. between, because it's within the same silicon, right? Yes. Uh, so we all do all that and when all the information has been interpreted, then it's when we offload the board itself. Wrong. So all the interpretation pre and post processing happens alongside the ML model, right. not just the acceleration part. So right. I, if you try, I, I work in HPC before, and if you try to accelerate ML forever, like the main problem that I was having was feeding enough data to all those accelerators, like two, 256 GPUs, feeding enough data to them was a really, really hard challenge. Because the problem is no longer the accelerator, it's everything else. North Bridge connection, PCI Express, etc. Since you have everything on the same chip, you don't have that problem anymore. Right, so that's an absolutely unique approach for SEMA AI. Yes. Fantastic, good. So, IP Exchange community, I think we've got quite a lot to digest there. Actually, I'm not sure I'm clever enough to actually digest it, but we talked about low power per watt, yeah. Remind me, low power per what? Low, low power Help. per what? Yeah. Effortless ML. Yes. And we accelerate everything, not just the ML side of things. Absolutely, fantastic. So I think that this gives you a really, really fantastic um, AI solution. Uh, quite different from everybody else's approach that we've had uh, on IP Exchange. And if you want to find out more, come to ipexchange.tech and Manuel. Been a great interview, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Good. Thank you. Hey, where my engineers at?